Evening all, Daniel Hand, RPG Therapist. Continuing our exploration of the story trinity by taking a look at the second aspect, the setting. In many ways, this is the most straightforward part of the trinity to put together. If you think back to what we said about the setting way back in our video on the story trinity as a whole, you'll remember that the setting is really just quote-unquote, where the story takes place. This can include things like locations, environments, time periods, tone, genre, etc. If the character gives the story its focal point, the setting gives it its atmosphere, its rules. It's where the story takes place, yes, but it's also how the story takes place. For us, in our particular stories, the setting is Earth, the 2020s, a world with the internet, cars and pizza deliveries. A world where money talks and ACDC sings songs about it. My setting involves spending much of my day in a tiny room, ever in danger of being crushed by books. Yours might include supermarkets and television. We don't tend to think too much about the setting because it's obvious, it's just there. Nine times out of ten, we as an audience tend to focus more on a story's characters and the obstacles they face, rather than where they're facing them. Only when the setting is quirky, well realised and crucially important to the plot do we sit up and take note. The same can be said of an RPG setting. It's very easy to get lost in the excitement of creating an awesome new character, or the joy of rolling dice to fend off a giant dragon, and in so doing forget that the world is important too. Indeed, as we know, without that world the character would have nowhere to go, and the dragon wouldn't exist. The story couldn't happen. So, although it can be easy to overlook this aspect of the story trinity, it remains important that we put at least a base level of thought into its generation. Which, of course, begs the obvious question, how might we go about doing that? Okay, by now you and your clients have already decided a number of things. You've decided that RPG therapy is the way forward, you've decided the basic genre or type of game you'd like to play, you've decided the specific game mechanics you'll be using, and you've decided who and what the client's character is going to be. Frankly, that gives you just about everything you need in order to put a coherent, therapy-appropriate setting together. Indeed, some games come with their own pre-designed setting, which you can just familiarise yourself with and dump your client's character into straight away. Free League's The One Ring, Spire from Rowan Rook and Deckard, Dolman Wood, Pendragon. If you play these or games like these, you don't actually need to create a setting, just make sure you've read the appropriate material and you're golden. Most other games, like Thirsty Sword Lesbians, for example, or Shadow Dark, or even my own Practitioner's Guide, have extra materials like scenarios and adventure packs that do the creative heavy lifting for you. Of course, in all of these cases, you'll still need to make sure you put in a bit of effort to adapt said setting to the client's specific therapeutic needs, removing potential triggers that the creators obviously wouldn't have been aware of, adding NPCs or events appropriate to the clients, presenting issues, etc. But that's another video, we'll worry about that another time. If, however, you're playing a game that doesn't come with its own setting, or you've decided you don't really fancy playing in the one provided, or you just want to go the whole hog and create something specifically designed to meet the client's needs, this is where you take those earlier decisions into account. Primarily the genre of story you're telling, and the work you and your client puts into creating the character. If you're playing a fantasy game, for example, odds are you're looking at a medieval-esque society with knights and kings and peasants, but also with things like mythical creatures, magic and ancient mysteries. 
if you're playing a superhero game, like my friends and I currently are, you'll probably need a world quite similar to our own, if not, you know, our own. But maybe focusing on a metropolitan area that has things like banks to be robbed, secret villainous lairs to be found and infiltrated. And if you're doing a space opera, you're going to want at least a ship and some alien planets for the character to explore. How you create these things is up to you, but the easiest way to go about it, in my opinion at least, is just to spend some time pondering some of the cliches and tropes that come to mind when you think about that particular genre. And then just go with them. Sure, you won't necessarily come up with anything particularly original, but that doesn't matter. We're here for fun and for the therapy, not originality. And anyway, there's a large argument to be made that there are no truly original stories left to be told anyway, so don't worry about it. Just go for it. Take those cliches and put them together. Superhero game? You'll want a city like Batman's Gotham or Spider-Man's New York. The knowledge that a supervillain or two hang around in the background ready to cause trouble. And the opportunity for a giant blue space laser to come blasting down from the sky. Fantasy? Shamelessly rip off Lord of the Rings and all the Chronicles of Narnia. Space? Star Trek? Firefly? Blah blah blah. Imagination? Meh, it's overrated. And if the character's broad concept and genre can influence the broader concept and genre of the setting, the character's specifics can likewise tell us some of the specific features the setting will need. If they're a wizard, for example, that means there must be magic in the world, which in turn implies that there are other magic users to be found. If they're a space pirate... Why do I always use space pirates as an example? <laughs> but if they are a space pirate, that suggests you'll need to put some thought into the spaceships that the pirates will be attacking. You know, where are they coming from? What are they carrying? Why did the pirates want it? By creating their character as they did, the client is unconsciously telling you what kind of story they want to tell. So populate your world with people and situations that would fit with and facilitate that story. And don't worry, you don't have to do this alone. Let your client chime in. Ask them what exists where and why and how their character relates to it. If they help populate the world with characters and locations, that gives you even more of the story that they want to tell. If they say, and this is where the school bully lives, all you have to do when it comes time to play is contrive a means of having the character cross paths with said bully and then ask the client what happens next. The eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that we're already straying into obstacle territory, which just goes to show how intricately linked a good story trinity can be. Again though, don't feel the need to be original. If you're creating a new setting for every client, you simply won't have the time or the brain space to create a dozen new worlds every week. So just harken back to various novels or comics or movies or TV series, then copy and paste. I'm very much a KISS proponent, keep it simple stupid, and there's nothing simpler than whipping off somebody else's ideas. Just change the names, add some different colours, and away you go. And once you've done that, that's it. You're ready to turn your attention to creating the obstacles that you'll put in the characters, and so the clients, way. Good times, my friends, good times. For someone like me, creating settings is the funnest part of the whole process. I'm a fantasy author at heart and have been building my own worlds ever since I was about 11. I used to draw a lot and there's a definite distinction between before and after I read the Chronicles of Narnia. Before, I was chiefly drawing secret bases. After, it was pretty much always fantasy maps. For our purposes as RPG therapists though, we don't need to go into too much detail. All we need to do is offer a stage for our client's character to act on. If we let the client do some of the creative heavy lifting, our lives become that bit easier. So then, what do you think? 
how would you go about creating a setting for your client's therapy? And what is it you really look for in an imaginary world? Let us know in the comments. While you're down there, please like, share and subscribe. You'll also find a link for my book, Role Playing Games and Psychotherapy, A Practitioner's Guide. And you can sign up for my newsletter, Handwriting, where, much like here, I talk about RPGs, therapy and RPG therapy. If you sign up now, you'll also get a free adventure pack. Everyone, thanks so much for watching. I do look forward to sharing your company next time. So until then, take it easy. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, and have a good one. Cheers. My book, Role Playing Games and Psychotherapy, A Practitioner's Guide, is available wherever you get your reading material. If you're interested in becoming an RPG therapist, that's a great place to start. Link below. You can also sign up for my monthly yish RPG therapy newsletter, handwriting, again, link below. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, either with thoughts on the channel, with a view to getting some RPG therapy training, or even if you're a prospective client looking to start therapy, you can find me at my website, monomythcounseling.co.uk. I'd love to hear from you.